welcome back to Cottage Treasures Quilting. My name is Ale Dupuy, and today we have a tutorial on Jacqueline Dijon's um, Enchanted Star. Um, and we had a tutorial not too long ago that's going to come out the same time as this one for Chasing Dreams. This one is a level 3 difficulty. Um, if you haven't done any of her quilts yet, I recommend you start with this one before you take on this one as the difficulty 6. Um, so the chasing dream really helps with um, learning some of the techniques that you're going to need for this video. As well as we went a little more in depth with the chasing dreams on the techniques than the enchanting stars. But uh, here you have it. It's beautiful from the Be Colorful fabric line and um, she's our fe featured quilter for 2019. Alright, we're going to work on Jacqueline Dijon's Enchanted Stars quilt kit today. So we want to show you all the steps involved in making this beautiful quilt. And the first thing I do is I organize my kit when it comes in. So what it looks like is you're going to have um, several bunches of fabric that are all cut to the right size. They're going to come with numbers on them and the numbers match the number chart which I keep over by the sewing machine just to double check my colors as I'm going to make sure there's no errors. Then um, you're also going to get these beautiful pattern pieces and there is a lot of them in this beautiful kit. Um, so what I do is I will cut out the pattern piece and I put it on uh, a cutting mat with an Ofa wheel cutter and I gently go on the outside of each of the lines. Then after I'm done that, I'm going to put it, uh, depending on what um, section it is of the quilt, I'm going to put it together with the matching pre-cuts of fabric in a Ziploc bag. That way it's over at the sewing machine and that circle is all together. So I will have the pattern, for instance, for this section of the quilt as well as the fabric for this section of the quilt in a Ziploc bag ready to go so it doesn't get confused with this section or this section later and it helps keep it all organized right from the start. So that's how I set it up. Now to cut, I'm just going to go along the edge here. I like to go along the outside edge and I actually put my finger on the middle of my rotor cutter just to keep it in line. I'm going to go all the way around pushing quite um, hard down to make sure I cut through the paper and I leave a little tiny uh, 1 16th of an inch or a half a millimeter distance all the way around and I'm going to cut all the patterns like this. Okay, so we finished cutting all our pieces out from A to J and put them in separate baggies as you can see. Um, two things to note when you're cutting them out one is that on these, some of them, you'll find some extra numbers on the outside perimeter of the pattern. So what we did there was just cut out the outside edge. Eventually, when you have the fabric in place, you're going to move these numbers onto the fabric. And they're going to tell you where to st stop and start when you're adding your fabrics together. Um, another thing we came across is we wanted everything in this uh, part A to be labeled A, but they don't always come like that. So when you get some of the little pieces, you might have to write on them yourself exactly what part they are. So that helps keep things organized. Um, and the last thing I do is um, I leave them folded up in the bag as they are, and then when it's time to use them to start paper piecing, I just run the iron over them upside down. And it works quite nice to straighten them out again. Okay, so now for the next part, we're going to prepare our fabric. So it comes uh, kind of wrinkly from the packaging process. So what I do is I just peel the number off and keep it to the side. Give it a quick iron to make it as smooth as possible. And then I attach the number again. Now for the first cut, I'm gonna prepare these. I'm preparing numbers 1 through 17 on my cutting board. So I'm going to line them up on the side and I'm going to do four at a time and I'm cutting them three and a half inches by 44, the whole strip. And that will be my first set of cuts, which is in accordance to the pattern. So I'm going to start lining these up 
uh, trimming the edges so they're square because some of them look like they were cut with a beaver or a chainsaw. So we'll uh, square them up nice and even and then we'll just take the minimal amount in strips of 44 inches long off of them. For me, one of the scariest parts is when it comes to that moment when it's time to cut your fabric. So what I've done is I arranged all the fabric numerically with the color number up on the top left hand corner and I'd always cut from the right side so I knew which color was each one numerically. Then you're going to cut these long strips according to Jacqueline's chart. So these strips are 44 inches long by uh, three and a half inches, two and a half inches, two inches, one and a half inches. This is for part A. Then you're going to put different colors in these piles of each width depending on what fits that section of part A. So for instance, not every color in this pile is going to be in the three and a half inch section. So do it according to her plan, but this is what it's supposed to look like. And then you cut pieces off of those to be the exact width she's asked for. So for instance, here she's asked for three and a half by four and a half. So then you'd cut from the ends of these piles, the exact colors in that section of the chart in four and a half inch pieces. Then you put them in this pile um, in accordance to the number she has. So they all follow suit. One follows two, two follows three, and you put them in order. Now, one of the biggest tricks I uh, love is that each of the pattern part sections, like this is part A we're working on, has a number section. A1, A3, A1, A3, A4, A4, a11 and again A11. So you know exactly which pile you're working from when it comes time to paper piece on the pattern. Very effective. So as far as the cutting goes, that's what it should be looking like to proceed. So I have my pieces in order here. Um, we're going to take color number two and lay that down. And then we're going to lay color number one over top of it. And the way we have it is so when they do open, you'll have good sides facing away from the paper, facing this way. So you always want to paper piece with the good sides facing each other when you're sewing them. So you can see from right here that um, the white's more than covered for this section with the seam allowances. And I uh, use a business card and lie it on the line. And then you can fold your piece of paper over to get a nice crisp, crisp uh, line. And then you can also see that number two here has more than enough fabric behind it to fill in that spot plus the seam allowance. So we'll add the quarter inch here on the outside here, bring it over to the machine. It's a little finicky with the first sew on a piece of paper just because the paper wants to slide and the fabric wants to stick. So just get it lined up. Right in there. And I want to start a little bit into the line already because we're going to do our back stitch. And so back stitch, forward. Follow the line even if it goes right into the seam. Follow the line to the end. And then back stitch to lock it in there. And we open that up. And you can use a little iron or bring it over to your ironing board. I'm just going to finger press them for now. Alright, so then we move on to the third piece which is color number six. Now I do have my color chart readily available just to double check colors. Color number six. So business card on the line. Fold that over.
now we have a nice crisp line. So now, now we need to cut our seam allowance, quarter inch. That's a nice piece to save for later, just in case. So, these are batiks, so you don't have to worry about good side up when you're sewing the batiks to the batiks. So that's a nice, a nice bonus. But you could flip it over and see which side you like better. That looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna lay this down on the underneath and make sure you can see this is my piece I need to fill. And I have more than enough fabric to fill that. So now we'll bring it over to the machine. The line starts way back here. So we'll jump a little forward. We're gonna do our back stitch. Forward. to that point, back stitch to lock it in. All right, repeat the process, pull it out. Give it an iron or a finger press. So we've trimmed them up and um, we've written down our number of the pie piece onto them. So now we're gonna go through um, joining them together in sections of pairs and then once the pairs are sewn together then they get sewn in together into one pair and then we'll sew them to the one we've already done so we'll start with one to two so one two good sides facing each other um, right off the bat you're going to just line up pretty much the outside of your circle raw edge to the inside raw edge and we're going to test it there. So I recommend you have your stitch length set to over two, anything lower than two, and it takes it's hard if you do have to take that thread out. You gotta grab the seam ripper and we're not gonna worry about that. So when you feel like you've got them fairly lined up, we're gonna go ahead and drop the needle close to where those points will be meeting. Quarter, we're doing a quarter inch seam, so put a quarter inch foot on, or if you don't have a quarter inch foot, you'll need to adjust where your needle sits towards the throat. So we're just gonna do about five, six stitches here. And we're gonna open it up and see where our points match. So you can see right there that our points are not matching very nice at all. So. We're gonna pull the thread, and that's why we do the bigger stitch length than two, because I just had to pull that thread, and now our pieces are no longer together. It makes it a lot easier to do this a couple times if, if you're um, wanting to make sure that your points are near perfect. So we'll try it again. Five stitches. Okay, we'll open it up and see. So our points are very nice there with the basting stitch. Um, we're gonna go ahead and now finish the stitch. Sometimes you can get it on the first try. Sometimes I've honestly had to pull the basting stitch out about four or five times just to line it up nicely. But now that we know it's good, we'll go ahead and sew the whole piece together. So right off the bat, I always start with a backward stitch and then run over it again just to lock this piece in. So just mind the quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna have to lift the foot because it might wanna veer, veer off a bit. So I find when I get down to the point, I don't want the feed dogs when I'm backing up to pull the piece in. So I use a little piece of paper to continue the stitch. And then that gives me control over the fabric when I'm doing my back stitch for it not to get pulled down into the machine. And then 
we'll just rip the paper off. So open it up. So that looks very good. The orange is a little bit over the blue, but at that point I'm happy with that. So we'll do the next one. And this is three, three to four we're gonna do now. So good sides facing each other. And line up the raw edges in the corner the best you can for the first basting stitch to see how the points are gonna line up. And we'll go ahead and put about five stitches into it to see how it looks. Looks good, I'm gonna run with that one. So sometimes you get lucky and uh, they line up on the first, the first uh, go, which is very nice. So we'll start where we started last time and a back stitch to lock it in. Quarter inch seam, raw edges of the sides of the pie matching together. And then again, when you get close to that point, we're gonna throw a little piece of paper in there just to help us mind the fabric from getting pulled in. And then back stitch to lock it in. And there you have it. Another good looking uh, point. So now we have two. We have one to two and three to four. So, now we're going to match two to three together. So I'm quickly going to take it over to the iron table and just iron that seam flat. I'm not going to iron it open. I'm just going to iron it flat. So we've put one and two together and three and four together. Now we're going to join two to three together to make it one whole side, one whole half of the circle. So it's, it's the same process. So we're going to put good sides facing each other and we're going to try and line it up the best we can with the raw edges and give it the basting stitch, about four, four or five stitches, and uh, hopefully the points match up and we can finish off this half. Open it up just to double check, and it's perfect. Purple meets the blue, or the green, at the same plane, so we will run with that one. Start where we had just started. Back up and then forward. Quarter inch seam, raw edges of each pie even. Now, machine's going through quite a few seams here, so it may get loud. I'm going to stick my little piece of paper in the end to keep it from getting pulled in and a back stitch to finish it. So we open it up. Now we have another half so we will be able to join our two halves together. Um, now that we've done one half of the circle we will iron this seam open. So all the other seams just go one way or the other. We don't iron them open because if you keep ironing them open, you start to get a lot of open seams getting um, sewn together. So it's best to just leave them flat. It helps with the free motion quilting later on too. The machine is quite loud with free motion at the end of these because there's so many um, layers of seam allowances. But So we'll iron this one open the same way we did this one and then we'll put these two together. Okay, so we ironed our seam open the same as we'd done on the first one. Now we're going to join the two together. Um, line them flat, you can see that there's a bit of gap in the middle, uh, so they're not perfectly uh, straight, but it doesn't matter because when we, when we have it in the sewing machine, we'll make our raw edges meet up. So we're going to do the same thing as before, good sides facing each other, and we're going to try our best to line up our raw edges at the top in the corner. and go for a first little basting stitch to see how the first points on this side um, match up. Okay. 
I'm happy with that. It's a little, the blue's a little bit more prominent than the orange, but I'm happy with that. So that's one side. Um, we are gonna go ahead and flip it over and we'll work on the peak on the other side. We won't start stitching the whole thing together until we have our, our points where we want them and the center seams of our stars meeting up nicely. So we'll go ahead and jump to this other side and try and get it on the first try would be nice. stitches open it up the reds a little bit further than I want it to be so I'll redo this one pull the basting stitch out it's not really a basting stitch it I mean it is the same regular same stitch length I'm using to do the whole quilt I just find that if you don't do any more than six seven stitches with it it's easy to pull that one thread out um, it's not going to affect your quilt later on because we do do the backward stitch to ensure that our quilt is um, tight together and not going to fall apart when we're putting it together later all right so the blue looked like it wasn't far enough up I'm gonna pull it up a bit That's much better. Red and blue are meeting at the same spot, so we'll we'll leave that one, that stitch in. Now we're going to meet up our two seams in the middle and give this a little bit of a basting stitch just to hold it down into place. Quarter inch seam allowance. This is gonna be loud with all those seams right there. So we open it up, we can see that our, our lines meet nicely in the middle, our um, points are nice on the ends, so now we can go ahead and finish this off. Just go ahead and start from one end and work your way down to the other, and just make sure your raw edges of both fabric are um, parallel with each other. So we'll do our back stitch, and then forward. making sure that our fabrics are equal. Go right through our last basting stitch. Through our last one, and I am again going to throw the piece of paper in there. stitch, lock it in, and we'll open it up, take a look, and there we go, another star point complete. So we are going to iron this seam open, and this can now go to the side till we're ready to intersect. So we'll fold in half using our business card, the paper here, right on the line that we're going to be sewing. And we're doing one to two, so two will be on top. And then once we're done and you fold open where your um, good sides will be facing, one will fold over to where it is on the foundation paper. So we'll line these pieces up. I'm doing it down in the corner here just to save some of this um, piece here. It doesn't need to be so big. And we're doing a quarter inch seam, so you just line up your fabric a quarter inch past the uh, foundation paper and we'll sew this on the line.
So a backward stitch to lock it in, all the way across the line, and a backward stitch to lock it in. So we'll flip it over, and whether you iron it or finger press it, I finger press it, and then I just iron it once I've completed the whole, the whole go of it. So that's the first ones, one and two going together. So now we'll use our business card again and fold on the line connecting two and three together. And now we'll take it over to the cutting board here. Because we only want a quarter inch seam allowance. So you can see by lining that up in the corner we we're able to save such a big piece for later which is nice. So our next color for number three is color two. I refer to my chart real quick, that looks like the right one. And we'll go ahead and line it up underneath here. And you can see the pattern. I'll just line it up in the corner and see what we get. When we fold this over, we see through the paper that this piece more than adequately covers up the whole three plus the seam allowances you want to make sure you keep. So that looks good. We'll bring it over to the machine again. Let's start a little bit past where that line starts because we're going to do our back stitch first. And if your stitch goes into the um, seam allowance, don't worry. It's just going to be a stronger stitch and less likely to fall apart on you later. So a back stitch, forward, sew the whole line, and then a back stitch to lock it in. Open it up, finger press it, and then we move on to the next one, three to four. Again, fold it in the paper with the business card. Now that we have that folded, we know that we need our quarter inch. I'll cut that out. Now that we have it folded, we know we need our quarter inch seam. So we'll cut our quarter inch seam off. Put that to the side. It's showing that our next color is 12. quickly gauge it with our colored guide underneath, looks good. Line this up with the side, raw edges. see purple, I can see the line of what uh, this triangle is, and it looks like the fabric is going to cover that, so we'll bring it over to the machine again. And just repeat this same process until we've completed this whole check mark. Backward stitch, forward. Backward stitch to lock it in. Finger press open or iron, whichever you prefer. And fold in half with the business card and repeat the process until you're done. Okay, so 
we finished off the spike uh, spiked um, question mark. There was quite a small little piece here to finish it off. And um, so we'll take it over to the oh, we'll take it over to the cutting board and we will cut um, all the extra off. And then we'll talk about a couple things that are important to do before you would go about taking the paper off. Okay, so now we're gonna cut all of the extra fabric off and talk about a few things. So most of these spots are curved, so you can't really use a lap, uh, ruler. So you're just gonna have to go with it with your rotary cutter. Do you wanna zoom in over here? Sure. So we have that little bit extra, the 16th of an inch that we had when we first cut out our uh, foundation paper piece. So we are going to get rid of that now. So we'll just go ahead and follow the curve the best we can. So I'm in the process of finishing up one of our flying geese um, patterns. So I'm gonna finish off these last six piece, pieces and then show you what to do when you come across a spot on your pattern that says tape line. It means that there's a continuation and the next one will come along and will get taped onto that spot. Then you will be able to continue uh, the pattern. So we'll finish up this one right here. All right, so that's it for this pattern. So now we will um, trim off the excess here, right to the black line. This black line right here, we'll trim right down to that. And now we'll take our next pattern and we'll clean it up. So we'll take this little extra piece of paper here off right to the black line as well. And we will tape it down to what we're working on right now with some scotch tape. So a little scotch tape and then lie it down on that tape line right where the stars are. And there we are. So, now we continue off, continue on from where we left off by folding that line back. The line we just taped. And you can see from the tape line that it gave us our quarter inch seam. So then we grab our next color, which is 11. And there we go. So now we're on to the next pattern. And we continue the process until we make it all the way to the end. And then this piece doesn't have any other spots that say tape line. So do you know that uh, once you get down to the bottom there, you're done this pattern. Okay, so we finished our um, general assembly of all the pieces for the quilt. So now we have to go about putting them together and they're put, it, they're put together <clears throat> in sections. So all of the A patterns will be put together and then placed to the side, uh, B, C, D, on until the end. So the first thing to do, it says, is to apply piece A2 to A3. So whenever you're going to add pieces together that are round or circle, you need to check your pattern for little stars. Wherever you see, wherever you see these little stars, you need to mark it onto your fabric. So if I peel this back, you'll see that I used a white pen to mark that spot. So wherever you see a star, you need to mark it. If it's a light fabric, you use a, a blue pen 
or whichever pen you have around your house, like a black pen or blue pen would be fine, but these are water soluble. And then if it's dark fabric, use a white pen. So I went ahead and I marked all the stars on this piece. So now I gotta do it on this one. So I'm just gonna pull back the fabric, make a little mark on the inside as well. And all this is doing is giving you a bit of a, a legend here because these points that are marked on this fabric, once we tear the paper off of this one, they will match up and you'll know where to put your first set of pins for intersecting your circle. So we're gonna go ahead and cut off the secondary seam allowance on our pattern only. So you do not wanna cut the fabric. So you can either pull the fabric back from your second seam allowance or take the take the paper off of your pattern to cut the secondary seam allowance. So you go ahead and just go up rotary, use your rotary cutter and go all the way around your pattern to cut that secondary seam allowance off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the point of the secondary seam allowance is that when you're matching up um, a circle to another circle, there's gonna be a secondary seam allowance to be able to, if one pattern's more, if the fabric's out more on one spot than the piece you're going to, you can, you have extra fabric to work with. So yeah, go ahead and take that off and then you're gonna to wanna to throw it back onto your fabric. And you're going to want to mark it again. And by mark it again, I mean mark the secondary seam allowance down onto your fabric. That way later on, when you have the paper removed, you still know where your secondary seam allowance is. And you'll just do it with little hash lines going all the way around. We've pinned these two pieces together. Um, and we used the lines that we had marked from the stars on the paper that we trans transferred um, to line up our two fabrics so the circles should intersect in a nice spot. So <clears throat> first off I pinned it on every spot that we had marked with the stars on the foundation paper and then um, I did three pins in between each of those. So. Um, the double seam allowance is on the outside, that's going to be for when it's intersected into a, another piece later on, but as you can see, we've pinned them raw edges even, and I set up my walking foot just to uh, help distribute the fabric nicely underneath the foot, and um, so we'll go ahead and start sewing this. All right, and there we've intersected our first circle. So depending on what the instructions say, sometimes they don't want you to um, iron the seam open. Sometimes they want you to leave it going one way just for making it easier for sewing later. So just as per instruction, as per the seams, but as you can see, they're a little, it's a little off here, but I'm, I'm sure that um, we'll catch that in the seam allowance on the next on the next piece we add to it. Attaching, so we're intersecting the small star into the pieces we had just sewn. So it's important to remember that anytime you turn your fabric over and stars are showing on it, like this, you're gonna wanna lift that paper and make a mark on the fabric. And I'll show you why right here. This is the point of our star. And so we want the point of our star to match up with the right spot on the other fabric. And you can see there is where I had marked it. So when you have the good sides facing each other, you match that line that you marked on the fabric to the seam. 
so that seam intersects with your um, point on your inner circle. So what you're going to do is you're going to use all the lines you've marked with a fabric felt pen and intersect them into the seam on a point. So once you've pinned all your eight points, then you can start working on pinning in between them and just trying to find a nice happy medium. And the main goal is you're trying to keep those raw edges flush. So I put a pin right there. And then move on in between these next two points. And so on and so forth until you've pinned it quite nicely so it'll run in your foot. You're gonna be leaving, you're gonna be lifting your foot quite often to kind of pull out the wrinkles. But just remember that if you're sewing and your wrinkle is on this side of where you're sewing, it's fine as long as the wrinkle doesn't run through where you're gonna stitch or you're gonna see that later. As well as the circle that you're putting in the middle always lays flat and then the piece, the piece that you're sewing to your circle will be the one that you wrinkle in to be able to fuss it through your foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning this and then uh, run it through the machine. So we got a trip, now we've got our inner star uh, intersected in here. So now we need to get rid of our secondary seam allowance on um, this outer rim. So what the secondary seam allowance is to allow you to ease in um, so you're not jumping over to the line, you just slowly make your way to the line. So I'm gonna start over here. And instead of going right to the secondary seam allowance, I'm going to work my way over to it. And then I'm going to follow it once I'm on it to cut the extra fabric off. And this is going to make a perfect circle to be able to, because we're going to intersect this circle into another one later. So we just follow those lines. And then once you get close to this um, spike border again, you're gonna ease your way into it, which it actually looks like my secondary seam allowance matches up with it right on the dot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So now we have a perfect circle for when we're intersecting into our flying geese in a little bit. So we've finished piecing the top of the quilt together. Now we're going to uh, baste it. And um, we like to use um, our Craft Bond Elmer's basting spray. This is what we use. Find it's a lot um, cheaper than uh, 505 at some time, so that's what we're using. So we've already basted the top of our quilt to the batting. And uh, now we're going to base the batting to our backing. Um, we've got our windows open and um, we're, once we base this we're going to leave the room for a bit to let the fumes um, get out of here. So 
go ahead and baste this. All right, so now I'm gonna set up the machine and uh, get ready to start free motion quilting. Okay, so I've started quilting the quilt top and um, we've picked three colors. We're going white on white, black on black, and gray on all the color. So I'm going to go through, um, we're gonna do some feathers on the white and if you're familiar with feathers, this is kind of just a refresher or um, if you're new to feathers, this is the way that I do them. So. Come with me while I put some feathers into this whited air, white boarded area. And um, two more I'm gonna throw in here. Um, and just to show you a little bit of the designs I've been doing in the spiked borders, I've been doing um, same as I'm doing on the white feathers inside the bigger uh, triangles and then a little accent stem in all the smaller ones and then when they go to a spot where they change directions of the bigger and smaller sides, I've just swapped them around to the other sides and continued. And I'm doing a nice flower pattern I came up with in the flying geese area and wherever there is um, a full circle border I'm doing a feather and just a continuous feather all the way around. So I'll show you some of those um, once I finish this, uh, this white circle. I've moved on to the flying geese pattern now and I'm going to demonstrate it for you. It's kind of a little double feather bump with a little flower in the middle and then you just repeat the process. So I'll do a couple here for you as a demonstration. So do the first feather bump, and then one on the other side. And now I'm going to start the little flower. Echo over it, then do a bigger flower. Go back to get back to the center of the flying geese and then start my next feather bump. And I'm going to continue this pattern all the way around the flying geese. So we finished it, Enchanting Stars by Jacqueline Dijon. Um, had a blast with this one and went really all out on the free motion quilting. Um, this kit as long with um, Chasing Dreams is available on our store along with a lot of her other patterns that she has of the Be Colorful collection um, and that's cottagetreasures.store. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, leave some comments below. We love the feedback and this is Cottage Treasures Quilting. I'm Alay Dupuis and we'll see you next time.